people love us or people hate us with a lot of passion, you know. But that's perfect because I think the, the worst, the worst thing is that that's indifferent. Like many terms in football these days, the title of legend is one that is thrown around a little too liberally, to the point where the definition of the term has changed meaning over the years. But when you distill it down to its essence, Iago Aspas is absolutely a legend of Real Club Celta de Vigo. He's the perfect ambassador. Iago has all these values, the courage, the passion. A local boy who, despite a three-year intermission, has stuck with his club throughout, who has exhibited the qualities both mentally and tactically that they stand for, who has always been there to heed the call when they've needed him the most, and who has contributed to the club's history like few have before him. And that word, history, isn't to be used lightly when speaking of Celta. Now in their centenary year, Celta Vigo are a La Liga mainstay, ranking 11th in the all-time rankings, and with a modern approach to running the sporting side of the club, they're looking to stay for 100 more years. This is the story of Celta, Aspas, Afuteta, and Corazon. Hi guys, my name is Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV. For this video, we have actually partnered with Celta Vigo to share their story as they're in their centenary year, 100 years. So we will join by the commercial director of RC Celta de Vigo, Carlos Salvador, to provide some first-hand insight. On top of this, we'll also be raffling off a signed Iago Aspas jersey. Yes, signed by the legend himself. To enter and for details of the competition, be sure to click on the link below, only available to US and Canadian residents. Good luck, and let's get going. The city of Vigo is located in the province of Pontevedra in the region of Galicia, just north of Portugal. Given Vigo is right on the cold Atlantic Ocean, much of the industry of the city relies on the ocean, whether that be through fisheries or shipping, as Vigo boasts a very busy port. In fact, some of the world's largest fishing companies call Vigo their home port. And with the ocean and the great weather... A lot of people know us uh, as California, you know, it's the same as California, but with Jig. California, love that. But it isn't just industry related to the ocean in Vigo, as there is also a massive Citroën automotive factory. The people of Vigo are self-described hard workers, as Carlos puts it. All of this makes uh, our people a special characters, you know, in terms of courage, effort, hard work, uh, humble. Uh, you know, we are very, very, very special people, you know, like, like Vikings at the beginning, but... <laughs> In a, in a mother way. Carlos also mentioned how in Vigo there are the three C's. Christ, as in the religion, Citroën, as in the factory that employs many of the city's inhabitants, and of course, Salta. In the local papers, uh, all the uh, Monday mornings uh, are talking about Celta, what's happening with Celta, you know. In another big cities, uh, you go uh, into the bar or into the, the, the office just to start work and you can talk about the politician, about the weather, about the family or whatever. But here in Vigo, you go to the office and first of all is what's up with Celta, no? what's up with Aspas, or, you know, in, in both terms, you know, in, 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 in the good one, in, in the good side, but also in the bad side, you know, people love us or people uh, hate us with a lot of passion, you know, but that's perfect because I think the, the worst, the worst thing uh, is that that's indifference. And it's no wonder as to why Celta is such a prominent part of the city, as in August of this year, Celta de Vigo will turn 100 years old as the club celebrates its centenary. So here's a quick history lesson. Back in 1923, the city of Vigo had a few clubs, the two most prominent of which being Real Vigo Sporting and Real Club Fortuna de Vigo. These two were constantly contending to be crowned as the champions of Galicia. In fact, from 1905 to 1923, there were only five seasons where neither one of these sides were champions of Galicia. In Spain's early football history, Basque clubs were a bit dominant at the national level, which got Manuel de Castro thinking, why not merge the two most prominent Vigo clubs, pool their resources, and take on the rest of the country together as one? Manuel de Castro was a sports writer for the newspaper Faro de Vigo, and had even mentioned the idea of the merger as far back as 1915, with the idea that the clubs should come together in the name of Todo por y para Vigo, or all four and two Vigo. 
It took a while, but the merger began to take shape in 1923 once the Spanish Football Federation had given their approval. After multiple meetings and member votes between the newly merged clubs, everything had been finalized, including their name on August 23rd, 1923. While there were a few names considered, they ultimately went with Real Club Celta de Vigo, Celta being in reference to the Celtic people who lived in what is modern day Galicia. And in keeping themselves grounded to the region, while their first ever kits were red and black, they later changed to the sky blue you will recognize now, which is representative of the Galician flag. Now they did play against some British sailors, but their first match against an actual team was played against Portuguese side Boa Vista from Porto, as Celta beat them 8-2. That's a great start. During the 1935-36 season, Celta would achieve promotion to the Spanish First Division, and while their presence there would come and go, they would really start to make a name for themselves in the 90s, where Euro Celta, as the Spanish media would call them, was born. Some massive matches would be played in Vigo during this era of success for the club, playing in the UEFA Cup and getting famous victories such as the 4-1 aggregate win over Liverpool during the 1998-99 season, or their incredible victory over Zidane's Juve in the following season, where they beat them 4-0 at home to advance. And in speaking to Carlos about these victories, I would like to personally thank him for not mentioning how they beat Benfica 8-1 on aggregate as well, following a 7-0 win in Vigo in the second leg. They'd go on to win the Intertoto Cup also in 2000. Now, when speaking of Celta and some of their great escapes from relegation throughout the years, there's one name that comes to mind, someone who is part of the fabric of the club's history, Iago Aspas. But before we get to him, let's get a little more intimately familiar with the club. Just like most clubs that don't have an incredibly wealthy benefactor behind them, Celta has built themselves through their academy, their Cantera model. We work with the best kids from the beginning, and uh, we have two very uh, strategy areas. One of them is, is uh, young development. That, that's it, the Cantera, this Cantera model. In our first team, uh, we have more than 40 or 50% of our Cantera players, Aspas, Hugo Mayo, Ivan Villar, Gabi Vega. All of these players that have passed through the academy are educated on the four pillars of the club. These characteristics that are promoted within the club and make up their identity. We have a forteza, corazón, tradition and pride. You know, in Galicia, in Vigo, and Celta, we are very proud of, of, of our effort to make it better. Let's start with the first one, afuteza, a word that doesn't really have a direct translation in English, but both Carlos and even La Liga gave a crack at it. Afuteza was named as the Galician Word of the Year in 2017, and as La Liga themselves wrote, the word is a noun and can mean the spirit that leads someone or something to act without fear of danger, of difficulties, or the self-confidence of someone or something. After afuteza comes corazón, or heart, which is self-explanatory. Then comes tradition, as in adhering to the tradition of the club and its principles, as well as pride. Pride in representing Vigo, and in turn, Galicia. Afuteza e corazón. That is mean, more or less, courage and health. You know, mm. first thing that our fans wants to see on the pitch is that passion, you know, that passion, that courage, that safoldeza e corazón. Maybe you can win, maybe you can lose, but you have to never give up, you know. And with these pillars instilled into the mentality of the young players, they begin to teach them their footballing philosophy as well. Celta isn't a team that wants to win at any cost. Of course, that is important, as success helps to breed success, but Celta want to do it in their own style, a style they call football de salon. I don't know how you can translate it, maybe it's an elegance football or a um, red carpet football, something like that, you know. Uh, that also means uh, respect for the rivals and for the referee. You know, you know, we want to play, play well and good for the show, you know, for sure to score. And with that curate is the perfect mix to have the, the success. If you need some modern day examples of this, both Iago Aspas and Gabri Vega would be the two most prominent representations of everything Celta. The Afuteza e Corazon, the four pillars of the club, as well as the Futbol de Salon, the, that red carpet football that they want to play. Also in La Liga right now, 
top national scorer. I think we have six Spanish scorers, five of them came to Celta Academy. So it means that we have a good methodology, no, nothing secret, you know, but, but, but yes, it's, 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 it's a good model, it's clear. In March of 2022, a year ago now, Celta also formed a working relationship with famed sporting director Luis Campos. As mentioned by Carlos, their academy makes up a good percentage of their first team, around 40 to 50 percent. But for the rest, they look to Luis Campos and his company to scout the international academy, to bring in signings to complement what they already have, to fill in the spaces of what they are missing already. And also the model does that, that, that we work, is the same as he, you know, working to detect the young talent, help them to develop in the right way. It's the perfect balance. Miss Campos, we can say that is the uh, the scouting of our international academy. As an example, you can look at Jurgen Strand Larsen, a young Norwegian that Celta signed from Groningen. Williet Swedberg, an 18-year-old Swede who was signed from Hammerby, or of course. Luca De La Torre, also signed from the Eredivisie's Heracles in 2022. But whether you are from the academy or from the international academy, I love the way that Carlos put it, all of the players stay connected with the academy. We are still a family club. We are not a lot of people, you know, working very close with players. First team players are very close with the young people and, and academy ones. We like to do it in that way, you know, because they are very close. And from the first team players, it's, it's very important to know where he came from. And for the young player, is a perfect example that if you go to the first team, you don't have to change. You could be the same normal person. Perhaps the most prominent normal person from Celta has transcended just being a normal person. If there was one player that you could name as the perfect embodiment of what RC Celta de Vigo is all about, it would be Iago Aspas. Born just across the water from Vigo, Iago Aspas' family is representative of all of the things that Celta stands for and what makes the club. He comes from a humble, hardworking family. His mother worked long hours in the fisheries out on the cold Atlantic Ocean, but in the beating hot sun of northern Spain in order to provide. Aspas himself joined the club as a kid when he was just eight years old, and just like all academy players, was educated on this afuteta and corazón. Diago has all these values, uh, you know, the, the afuteta, the courage, the, the passion, you know, the heart. He put all the heart in, in all that he does. And also, you know, he has a, a very huge respect for the family, for the, for the values. While he left to go and try his hand with Liverpool abroad, that spell was ultimately unsuccessful. And after a loan to Sevilla, he returned to his boyhood club in 2015 and has continued to be a prominent player ever since. In fact, he has consistently been one of the top goal scorers in Spain since then. When it comes to active players, only Antoine Griezmann and Karim Benzema have scored more La Liga goals than Iago Aspas. And he has scored these goals irrespective of whether Celta was doing well or narrowly escaping relegation, just as he helped them to safety during the 2018-19 season. With 10 matches remaining, Celta were in the bottom three, but Aspas returned from a lengthy injury spell to score 10 goals and help save Celta. The following season, he scored five goals in the final seven matches to help Celta stay up as well. He has a pedigree of doing this for his club that dates all the way back to 2009 and stands as one of the more iconic moments in the shared history between Aspas and Celta. Celta was in the Segunda División and were facing relegation to Segunda B, the third tier of Spanish football. Celta was playing at home against Deportivo Alaves and they needed a win plus results to go in their favor in order to avoid relegation. After the bulk of the match had been played, Celta and Alaves were locked in a nil-nil draw. And according to Carlos, it felt like... He has a brilliant guy in the corner of the bench and, and, and it was everything lost. And all the people in the stadium, the, the staff, uh, the players, we need to score two goals in a, in a few times. Ah, let's, let's try, let's try that kid, that, that new kid, you know, uh, he scored out of goals. Let's see, let's see, 
maybe, maybe can do it. As Carlos said, Iago was showing a lot of promise for Celta's B team, and in the 59th minute, he was brought on as a Hail Mary attempt from Celta's manager. Aspas, at 21 years old, came on for his debut with at least two goals needed. In the 80th, he put them ahead. What a way to make your debut. Only for Alaves to pull one back via Wanjo in the 89th minute. But then, in the 94th minute, I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. This, of course, went on to become a very, very famous match among Celta supporters. Here in Vigo, it calls the, the famous match of the 0.4%. Uh, That's the percentage, the real percentage we have to, to save the category. We have a, 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 a fan base, a, a Peña, you know, uh -huh. a, yeah. a, a fan group that is called uh, the, the Peña of uh, 0.4. Ah. That's amazing, yeah. They they take that and they wear it like a a badge of honor, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> what a way to make your debut and begin your legend with the club. And talk about, with the benefit of hindsight, setting yourself up for a career of important goals for Celta. And with the club's centenary year underway, it's safe to say that throughout his career, Iago Aspas has become the perfect ambassador for the club. A career of football de salon, a career of being the representation of the four pillars of Celta, Avuteza, Corazon, Pride and Tradition, 100 years of heritage in Spanish football. That will do it here, but guys, a big thank you to Carlos and of course to RC Celta de Vigo for collaborating with me on this project as it was a joy to work on. If you want more info on Celta, then their YouTube channel is a great place to start. But other than that, I thank you for watching and I hope you'll subscribe to stick around for more. Take care.